The FTSE Global All Cap and the FTSE All World are two very popular funds. They're both global funds, but there are a few key differences between them that you need to be aware of, particularly before making your first investment into either one of them. So in this video, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the two funds, going through all the differences between them, and this can hopefully guide you in the right direction to see which one is better for your personal situation. Relax and take notes. Welcome back to another video. Make weekly videos here on investing in personal finance, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. I also make a range of content across a range of platforms, all for free, Instagram, TikTok, and the Making Money Simple podcast, to name a few. So check those out if you get a chance. But this video is gonna be all about global funds and specifically the FTSE Global All Cap and the FTSE All World. The FTSE Global All Cap, I'm gonna call the All Cap going forward just to keep it simple. And the FTSE All World, I'm gonna be calling the All World. Before I get into the key differences between them, and there are quite a few, the first thing I will say is, as I've mentioned already, they're both global funds, meaning they're globally diversified by investing into companies around the world. They're both low fee, they're both passive and hands-off, and they're both great funds if you want to set up an automatic monthly investment into either one of them and buy and hold for the long term. In this video, we're gonna be going through the key differences and hopefully I can help you make a choice in terms of which one is best for you. The first two differences are before we actually even get into the funds, and that is the platforms that are available on or their accessibility, and also the type of instrument they are. So, the first one, the type of platforms that are available on. The All Cap is available on Vanguard, Hargreaves Lansdowne, and AJ Bell. They are the main platforms it's available on. The All World, on the other hand, is available on a much wider range of platforms. That is because of difference two, which is the type of instrument that they are, and them two differences sort of link together. Going back to the platform for a second note, of course then, if you only have an account with Free Trade, for example, you can only invest into the all world, so that makes your decision quite easy in terms of which one to choose because you only have access to one of them, the all world. The all cap, as I mentioned, I invest into the all cap personally through my stocks and shares ISO with Vanguard and my stocks and shares license with Hargreaves Lansdowne, just for sort of full disclosure and to be transparent, but I also invest into the all world through my Free Trade General Investment account, so I sort of have a bit of both even though the large majority of all of my total money that is invested is in the FTSE Global All Cap. But getting off topic there, the first key difference clearly is the platforms that they're available on. So whatever platform you have an investment account with, just do a quick search for the All Cap and All World and see which one is available. Also, another thing to be aware of, if you haven't opened an account yet, maybe consider which one you want to invest into and then open an account with a specific platform that offers the All Cap or the All World, whichever one you want. Of course, it's worth saying here that Vanguard offer both the All Cap and the All World. The second difference then is the type of instrument that they are. So the All Cap is an index fund, whereas the All World is an ETF. So I've made a whole separate video on index funds versus ETFs. Once again, similar to these two funds, index funds and ETFs are very similar, but there are some differences. The key difference, I won't go into all of them here, but the key difference is the index funds are valued once a day and cannot be traded, whereas ETFs are valued throughout the day, meaning their price fluctuates up and down as the market is open, and you can essentially day trade ETFs. Of course, whichever fund you're gonna use, I wouldn't recommend day trading all about the long-term buy and hold, passive investing strategy, that's what I personally do. But just something to take into consideration, ETFs you can buy whenever you want throughout the day, as long as the market is open. As I mentioned, I've got a whole video, I'll put it up here in the top right somewhere, of all the differences between ETFs and index funds. There are quite a few, but they're not really major. Similar to what I'm gonna talk about here with the all cap versus the all world, there are quite a few differences. But if you're simply investing automatically every single month and buy and hold it for the long term, the differences aren't really major. Okay, so we've gone through the first two differences, platforms and accessibility and the type of instrument they are. Now to actually look into the funds and see what is the difference between the FTSE Global All Cap and the FTSE All World. Before I get into the third difference, I just wanna say it's probably helpful here that with both funds, there is an income and accumulation version. So all that means is income, dividends are paid out as income or cash. With accumulation funds, dividends are reinvested automatically back into the fund. So both funds have an income and accumulation option, but for those who are using Vanguard, I use my stocks and shares ISA with Vanguard, as I mentioned earlier on. Vanguard have the FTSE Global All Cap income and accumulation version, but they only have the FTSE All World income version, which is VWRL. The accumulation version, which is available on Free Trade and Trade 212, is VWRP. 
Just something to be aware of. If you're using Vanguard, I talk a lot about them, of course. They have the all cap income and accumulation version, but only the all world income version. I guess it's probably because there's not enough demand for the accumulation version as well, so they only have the income version. Uh, but yeah, just something to be aware of if you're gonna be using Vanguard. So the third difference between the funds, and this is looking at the funds now in more detail, is that the all cap tracks large, medium, and small size companies, whereas the all world only tracks large and medium sized companies. So the all cap includes small cap stocks, which essentially means small companies. The all world doesn't include small cap stocks. In reality, this doesn't really make much of a difference. I'll chuck up some charts on screen now so you can see both the all cap and the all world um, really have similar track records since they've been around, which is why the most important thing is just to choose one, be consistent, invest regularly and get started. But of course, the all cap is more diversified in the sense that it also includes small cap. The reason why there's not much of a difference between two funds is because the all cap is only roughly about 10% small cap stocks, um, and then the rest is large and medium sized companies, whereas the all world is just completely large and medium sized companies. But that why there, that's why there is a slight difference between the funds, because the all cap includes small cap stocks. But just bringing it back to reality, there's literally hardly any difference between the two funds since they've been around. And I doubt there's gonna be a huge difference between them over the long term. The way this is reflected then in the funds is in the number of holdings that they have. So as you can see, the all cap has 6,893 stocks in the fund. So that's pretty incredible when you think about it. But it's got nearly 7,000 stocks, whereas the all world only has 3,574. I say, only still an insane amount of stocks in one fund all for a very low fee but you can see there that the all cap pretty much has doubled the amount of stocks and they are small cap stocks only make up 10% of the fund but it's more diversified and that is shown in the number of stocks that are included in the fund however if we scroll down and look at the portfolio data you can see it is pretty much identical so the first thing to look at is region exposure as you can see North America is about 60% in both Europe is about 17% in both. Pacific is about 12% in both. And we go a bit further down and look at the market allocation. They both pretty much got 57% in the US. They both got about 6.5%, 7% in Japan. Both got about 4.5% in China. Very similar. Go down further, we can look at the weighted exposure in terms of the industry they operate in. Technology in both of them is around 21-22%. Consumer discretionary is about 15, 16%. Industrial is 14%. And you can see even financial is 14% as well. They're very similar, very, very similar. I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but we even look at the top 10 holdings a bit further down. They have the exact same top 10 holdings. Of course, the all world has, for example, 3.17% in Apple, whereas the all cap only has 2.78%. And that is because the all cap, as we mentioned, also includes small cap stocks. So each Big holding is slightly less, but they've got the exact same top 10 holdings. So even though the portfolio data shows the all cap has pretty much double the amount of stocks in the fund because it also includes small cap stocks, they pretty much have the exact same percentages allocated to different regions, countries, companies, and sectors. If we then look at their distribution, which is their dividend, as you can see, the all world has 1.29%. As of the 30th of April, the all cap has 1.33%. So once again, they're very similar. The key difference here being is that the all cap, this one is accumulation, so the dividends are automatically reinvested. Whereas on Vanguard, the only all world ETF that's available is an income one. So then dividends are not reinvested, but they're paid out as cash. But as we can see, the yield is pretty much identical between the two. The next thing to look at is cost and minimums, or more importantly, fees. So, in terms of actually getting started with one of these funds, it's on, I'm looking through Vanguard's website, so you even need £100 to invest per month or a £500 lump sum. That's the same for both funds. But there is a slight difference in the fee. The All World has a 0.22% fee, whereas the All Cap has a 0.23% fee. So there's a 0.01% difference. Of course, that's absolutely minuscule, but the thing is with the fees, even a 0.01% difference, and I'm not trying to be pedantic here, if you do compound that over the long term, by reducing that fee, even by 0.01%, you will still be left with more money in your pocket. But I guess in my opinion, paying the extra 0.01% for more diversification is worth it. However, the all world obviously wins on this front because it's ultimately cheaper. And another way to phrase it, to make it seem 
bigger than 0.01% is you can say that the all world is 4% cheaper than the all cap. So when you put it like that, you can see that the all, even though it's only a 0.01% fee, and I know it's tiny, it's still 4% cheaper, so it's something to consider because ultimately, the lower the fee, um, the more money is gonna be left in our pocket in the long term. Another thing to be aware of actually, and this is specific to Vanguard, is that when you are investing into an index fund like the all cap, say you set up an investment for £100 a month, the whole £100 will be invested into the all cap index fund and you are able to get fractional shares. This is not the case for ETFs on Vanguard's platform specifically. It's currently trading at around £82-£83. So if you had set up an automatic £100 investment into the All World ETF or VWRL, only that £82-£83 would be invested and the other £17 would be sat in cash. You cannot buy fractional shares on Vanguard. Of course, this is different on other platforms. On Trading 2 on 2, for example, you can buy fractional shares in VWRL. And this goes back to the very first point about platform and why it's so important to choose the correct platform for you and it has the features that you want. So think about the platform, think about the instrument, and of course, all the other differences you mentioned as well still apply and hopefully that can guide you in the right direction to choosing the best one for you. As you can probably tell throughout this video, they're both very similar funds, they're both great funds. The main difference is that one's an ETF, one's an index fund, and the index fund, the all cap, also includes small cap stocks. The most important thing is to not get choice paralysis or information paralysis where you have so much information um, you don't end up making a decision. The best thing is choose which one you think is best for you, open an account on the platform that's good for you, set up an automatic monthly investment, and that's all you need to do. Then as your salary goes up, increase the investment. If you get a bonus, make a one-off lump sum investment. If you have any inheritance, you can invest a bit more, and that's all you need to do. Very simple, very automated, and a very boring approach. But if we concede that we can't beat the market and we can't predict which country is gonna perform the best, then a global index fund is a great way to invest. I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have stuck around, smash that like button. I forgot to say that at the start, so even more reasons to hit like. And drop a sub if you haven't already. I make videos every week on investing and personal finance. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.